let's bring on Scott. We have, do we have Scott? Scott, what's going on? Scott Montgomery, he's CEO of WellTech. How's your day going, man? Yeah, it's going really well, Brent. Thanks for having me this morning. I think it is your time. I'm down there up in Singapore. 9.26 a.m. So you're like, you're like this is like 9 p.m. for you? Just after. Yeah, 12 hours from, from well, you guys. Thanks. Yeah, thanks so much for uh, staying up late with us. I'm sure the audience appreciates that. And I, and I do want to warn the audience, we want some participation here from the audience, from the chat on our YouTube. If you guys have questions, hit them with there and we'll get them to Scott after he kind of does his presentation. I'll let you have it, Scott. Perfect, Brent. Thanks so much. Uh, and everyone for your attention this morning. Thank you and welcome. Uh, WellTech is a digital health platform, a global platform. Uh, we are listed on the CSE in Canada, WTEQ, and the OTCQB in the US as WTEQF. Um, so I'm going to get straight into it this morning. Uh, we're a really exciting opportunity in revenue, well banked, and we're bringing some transformation into the health and wellness system around the world. Uh, so a short uh, disclaimer slide, uh, which is in our pack, which you can access from our website, uh, where we come into this healthcare $10 trillion problem globally is that our mission is to coach people around the world to better health. Very simple, coach behavioral change around the world so that we can then also remove the strain from the healthcare system but also bring some smartness and intelligence into that. And so the four key factors that we do coach and, and help people change are sleep, are activity, are nutrition, and our mindset and, the, and psychology. The reason that we focus on these four key areas are they sit horizontally across about 75% of the cause of healthcare spend. And so if we can get better behaviours across these four consistent habits, then we can impact up to seven and a half or just over seven and a half trillion dollars of healthcare spend around the world. And so to do that, we need some digital assistance. We need to bring some transformation in the same way that retail has reinvented itself in the same way that media has reinvented itself in the same way that banking has reinvented itself with digital healthcare needs to do it now and the exciting thing is it's just begun where well tech looks at this process or this problem is that we expand our services across the full continuum of care uh, we're in, in in revenue across uh, over 12 languages down in asia pacific coming up into the north americas right now uh, with one and a half million arr annual recurring revenue uh, in the wellness and insurance sector so we have corporate customers and we help them improve their health habits and we help them prevent some costs and some risk inside their business the detection and the virtual care end of the spectrum is leveraging sensor technology and uh, AI ML coaching, uh, algorithmic coaching towards specific conditions. So just quickly on the digital transformation, we have introduced uh, telehealth into the healthcare system largely in the last uh, couple of years. The pandemic has been the accelerant here, but that's step number one of many and many and many. We need to start bringing some smartness and some intelligence into these consults. Rather than doctors on phones at distance, we want to bring some uh, some data transfer. We want to have continuous monitoring. We want to apply machine learning and AI across these data sets. And we want to empower the individual to access these records and the physician to access these records so that we get better supported care. And that's where our platform comes in to help. So we're a digital health platform paid for by employers, paid for by insurers today, and paid for by healthcare providers eminently. And so we connect software with our smartphone application, hardware, um, and then a, a very deep backend analytics function for uh, corporate and institutional insights. So profiling is more than questions. We take in clinical instruments like mental health profiling, like family and medical history. We've also got the wearable fraternity. We're agnostic to all main brand wearables. Uh, we've got capabilities also via partners where you can take um, imagery from your mobile phone of your face and your body and it will issue body fat percentage, comorbidity status and uh, even biometrics around uh, blood pressure. So that's your profile. Where we get to work is around really engaged. So we apply our personalization algorithm to the coaching and we can dish up recipes, we dish up exercise routines, we 
link that in with rewards and incentive systems. We have group training programs and very specific individual programs that we cater to. Now, for those people that have an escalated requirement, we can link that in through with um, telehealth partners. So we feed users into the telehealth system and then through our application, we can direct, uh, we can speak directly to those network and providers of general practitioner, practitioner psychologists. All of that creates data. That data in an, in an employer setting is de-identified, it is private, it is secure. No individual information goes back to the institution. However, it does offer very, very deep insights for cost identification, risk and predictive analyses. And so our platform really currently serves three main customers. Obviously the user, that can be a policyholder or an employee. It can be an employer looking to identify or reduce cost or risk or also provide a more smart version of health and wellness care to their employees. And then the insurer themselves. And there is fantastic return on evidence support to show that digital wellness users for insurance companies can reduce and have proven to reduce hospitalization costs, but by uh, 30%, so substantial savings. But we're in the world of, of uh, multiple and many. This is stress, this is opportunity, and the COVID pandemic has escalated um, the driver or um, the burden of mental health globally. And so the biggest institutions in the world uh, are starting to produce research to show that this is a secondary consequence of the pandemic that we need to start getting ahead of with some more proactive and preventative measures. So our ecosystem, um, we work with employers, we work with insurance companies, we work and facilitate introductions into primary care. And ultimately, this is a proactive, smart form of therapeutic for uh, a, a scale at a populational level. We, uh, we consult to some of the biggest brands in the world. Uh, we've got a very strong background in current clientele and financial sector and the insurance space uh, in construction. So we're blue collar, white collar as well. Um, and we're able to dish up um, health outcomes for individuals and therefore organisations at mass um, to improve those four levers um, of those, those pillars of health. So you've got activity improvements, you've got nutrition improvements that can be alcohol reduction, it can be fruit and veg improvement, it can be caloric control and improvement. Um, you've got cultural engagements around engagement scores for talent or HR retention and talent attraction. Very, very competitive in this day and age of work from home. Um, and uh, most importantly now is we're targeting and we're improving stress and sleep for our user base. We acquire customers and we distribute through um, resellers and, and corporate partners. So we white label for two health insurers um, already, uh, two of the largest, uh, two of the three largest in Australia. And we have reseller partners in um, big global brands like Willis Towers, Watson and Garmin who recommend and resell the WellTech platform into their corporate customers as well. So we've got a reach, we're in market, we're in 12 languages, um, we've had users in over 30 countries and we're expanding. We're, we're able to also uh, now interconnect um, through our health hub into the continuum of care down at the care end. And so our health hub incorporates edge computing, natural language processing. Uh, we've got multiple connectivity ports through uh, Zigbee, through Z-Wave, through cellular, through Wi-Fi. And this brings a network and a computational effect that your mobile phone cannot. So it's an escalated piece of hardware that facilitates a clinic, facilitates aged care. And our first clinical trial uh, later this year is slated um, for an Alzheimer's use case. The wearable itself is a clinical, it's a purpose-driven wearable. So bringing in five, uh, five main vitals of heart rate, oxygen saturation, body temperature, respiration rate, and this gives ongoing or continuous vital monitoring, and it can plug into a telehealth consult. So your doctor on Zoom can now, with our wearable, uh, be able to see real-time biometrics and vitals coming through the platform. Um, the entire virtual care system connects through with this, uh, this infrastructure and hardware and through open API specification back into interoperable clinical software um, through the FHIR and HL7 protocols, bringing real-world evidence to a physician and bringing continuous monitoring and support back to a patient. Our growth path, very, very 
actually very massive, but very clear. So stage one corporate wellness by 2026, this is just shy of a hundred billion dollar industry. The largest player in the space, Virgin Pulse, uh, currently valued uh, north of two and a half billion dollars. Um, InsureTech, so this is the technology adoption by the insurance carriers, by the brokers and by the reinsurers um, and providing services into that insurance space is stage two because your corporate employers also have insurance and they both have a common goal of reducing cost and reducing risk. And we are doing this already with large employers across Asia Pacific. Um, the targeted programs is where the sophisticated personalization really kicks in. You can choose or we can screen sleep specific programming. We can choose or you can screen in um, stress or weight programs. And so those programs um, become very, very targeted um, as that time or user knowledge um, that, uh, extends. Ultimately, there is, there is a position to introduce care. And so we can say to a user, hey, your risk profile has increased or you have a high risk profile, either go and see your GP and use this health risk assessment as a referral, or we can connect you in with a GP or a, or a, a psychologist at your convenience, and we're bringing care to the individual. And that is a new model. So we've got an early detection capability and an early intervention opportunity by providing access that otherwise we would be relying on people to get sick or broken or hurt and then go and seek out that care. We're bringing that care to them. Now, we can do that in one country. We can do that in many, and we're already touching um, with users in over 30 countries. The revenue model for us is super simple. So we're a subscription-based service. Our SaaS revenue at the moment grew over 100% year on year last year, as did our registered users, which will um, well exceed that, just to have 20,000 users currently on the platform. Our corporate wellness fees and price point, it sits between two and $6 per user per month and out to, in the clinical uh, program, will, will be $3 to $5. And that's still leveraging fantastic unit economics um, with our, um, our, our Asia-Pac-based team and um, a very intelligent, scalable architecture. The API is a new revenue stream that we'll be launching this coming quarter. And so this is where we, we can offer wellness into other institutions. So rather than requiring the download of a white labeled app of WellTech or a WellTech branded app, which our current clientele utilize, we can then pipe via API into existing applications or websites. And so that means that other institutions, telehealth companies, insurers, banks, we can offer a utility of wellness into their existing ecosystem. So very, very powerful. Um, and then the, the third for us is a hardware software bundle. So for those higher use cases to leverage our, uh, our health hub and our wearable, um, they go into an ongoing uh, subscription bundle uh, together. Um, and the fourth is with our partners, uh, we have a marketplace. So if we facilitate a paid telehealth consult, we put a margin on that transaction. If we sell a Garmin or another wearable device or a blood test or um, any other type of good or service, um, we can put a margin on those and create a, a fourth stream. So very, very, um, very scalable because we don't have people on phones or in clinics. This is all through the technology. The, the drivers for us currently are to expand what we have in a just shy of a 2 million annualized revenue uh, coming through the company. The focus for us in H2 um, this year and H1 next year are to establish new revenue streams. Number one with that API and number two with uh, the software hardware bundle of the, uh, the new technology. So we've only been a listed entity for uh, just coming up uh, five months. So it was March this year that we listed onto the CSE. Um, within that time, we've um, we've, we've put the funds used, raised by Canaccord and Gravitas to, um, to our great partner banks of ours. Uh, we raised nine and a half million dollars. So we've built out some of the leadership. We've established new and extended existing partnerships with Garmin, um, with, with UFIT, with ClassPass, the largest studio network in the world, um, with CanImmunize for digital pass uh, vaccine passport capability, Frontier Wellness, um, with a, uh, a partnership and a reach of over 140,000 physicians up in Europe um, and with LifeSpeaker recently listed, um, a very innovative uh, health company in Canada on the TSX. Our revenue streams is to bring in uh, more velocity and, and more streams and that's the focus. Uh, so our priorities are very, very clear with a growing team. 
We're, we're stewarded by uh, a very, very um, incredible board. Um, so uh, Dr. Vaughan is the chair. Uh, Dr. Vaughan is also the chairman of Health Infoway Canada, uh, which is tasked by the federal government to invest and to innovate the healthcare system of Canada. Uh, Peter comes from a, a deep background in both public, private and, uh, and the medical system, um, being a former surgeon himself, uh, being the former CEO of WebMD in Canada, former Deputy Minister of Nova Scotia. Um, so can understand the um, the players from a provider and from a, a payer system very, very well. Um, we've got uh, Jacqueline, who is a finance professional, having worked in the hottest centres around the world, New York, Amsterdam, Paris, London, now residing in Singapore and working on big and managing big transactions and capital uh, within uh, largely the healthcare sector. Uh, we've got Brian Lenas, who's a co-founder of the company, introducing the IoT capability, the hardware side of the business, uh, with a background in commercial IoT, uh, entrepreneurialism, and as a, a lawyer and, uh, and banker by background. Um, and our most recent uh, member of the team at the board level is Andrea Johnson, uh, based in Canada as well. Uh, Andrea is also on the board of Dentons and has a, an interest and a specialty within small and mid-cap M&A for technology companies. So sits very, very well with us as a well-banked company. Our management team um, is literally world-class and world-distributed. Uh, so we have, uh, we've got our chief medical officer based in Texas, um, who uh, is a, is a um, population health and epidemiologist expert um, holding former executive physician, uh, physician positions with a, a number of globally recognised institutions from GlaxoSmithKline to H Corp uh, to 3M uh, Corpus Christi Health. Uh, we have Andrew, who's our chief product officer, uh, data science background uh, and leading teams within credit risk profiling for predictive risk analyses, uh, for engagement and loyalty systems for retail, um, and uh, now currently charged with leading the product team at Welltech. James, I've worked with for well over a decade uh, in my last company that was a corporate health and wellness company built and sold as uh, one of Australia's and New Zealand's largest uh, wellness positions. Um, James is a former semi-professional athlete um, and has a, a tight diligence on um, operational and, and unit control. Daniel um, is an, an enigma between software and hardware architecture, um, ha based up in Denver, Colorado, um, and is a cre has created really the uh, the technology capable of extending that full continuum of care from a, both a software and a hardware position. Um, and lastly, to speak of Ollie Bridge, uh, Ollie is a uh, a health professional by background and trade, having uh, worked in the Formula One performance teams. Um, but most importantly for our wellness end of the business, um, he was the sales director and the lead at a company called Global Corporate Challenge and took that proposition to over 180 countries around the world before it was bought by the largest in the space today, Virgin Pulse. So track record of growing corporate health propositions out to scale globally um, and has spent the last uh, seven years before coming to Welltech running Australia's largest digital health proposition uh, for uh, the, the largest insurer there. Where we combine all of this is into an investment opportunity and, and it's being very famously and very commonly described as the next big uh, opportunity and it's the intersection of both technology and healthcare. We've got some already some very large demonstrations of how that works. Um, but that dispersion of healthcare from a clinic and from a physician in person into a ubiquitous, ever-present um, support system, which is what it should be and what it needs to be, is happening through that convergence of computer science, of data science and, and of health science. And some of that corporate activity here is already underway with some big numbers. So Microsoft's acquisition of the Nuance platform is bringing um, enterprise software to the clinic um, and, and very, very clear demonstration here that uh, that Microsoft is a, uh, a clinical software uh, leader of, of today and of the future. Uh, we have Amwell who, who took out um, Silver Cloud and Conversa uh, for $320 million on an aggregated revenue of $15 million. Uh, so uh, again, there's, there's real value being demonstrated in, uh, in the M&A space within health technology. Um, none bigger 
uh, and, and probably more timely and, and, and famous at the moment than Teladoc and Livongo. So Teladoc, a telehealth company buying a coaching company or a health coaching company in Livongo for $18.5 billion last year. We've got the merger of Babylon uh, coming out of Europe uh, up into uh, the uh, the US markets and a, and a SPAC merger and they're a, a health 3R system. So we've got some big numbers in here. Um, the, the last piece I'll leave you with is that th these peer comparisons are hundreds of millions and billions of dollars and our cap structure being well banked with 7 million in the bank uh, and EV just north of uh, $5 million. Uh, we are priced very, very well with those partners and with that momentum and the bank behind us. So I'll leave you with that. Thank you for your attention. Uh, and I'd love to pick up any questions if there are any, uh, any there from the audience. Yeah, I think we probably got question. We got time for maybe one or two questions here, Scott. Uh, we had a question about white labeling and I kind of wanted to ask about, you know, you were hinting at the API. You guys are going to be rolling out of API here. Are, yes. are you guys going to be doing a white label or is it going to be something that is going to be branded for your API? Uh, we already do. So that's available now. You can, as an institution, a telehealth company, an insurer, uh, as a bank, you can white label the platform as your okay. own application, configure it, and or you can use the, the, the WellTech app. And what kind of prospects is management considering for the API? How excited are you guys about the potential for an API? Well, basically, we turn any company into a, uh, a with the ability into a wellness proposition. So, um, just now bringing these conversations into market because we'll be launching this uh, in this coming uh, couple of months and next quarter. Sure. Um, there is so much interest, right? So it's telehealth, it's insurance, and uh, we've we've even got some hospitality opportunities looking at this to bring wellness to guests um, or to travelers uh, as that industry reopens. Interesting. Cool. Well, great stuff, Scott. Thanks a lot for joining us. Scott Montgomery, he is CEO of WellTech, OTC ticker WTEQF, and also uh, Canadian Stock Exchange ticker WTEQ. Thanks a lot, Scott. Thanks very much for your time, Brent, and everyone. Cheers.